What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm actually super, super excited to make this video and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the top five items that I use for pretty much every single interior car detail that I do. This, whether it be just basic wash stuff or doing a full blown interior detail. So on this channel I talk about car detailing, tips and tricks, how to's, pressure washer reviews, reviewing different products, all that kind of good stuff. So if you do like that, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and jump into the products. I have them all lined up behind me here. Let's look at them. Now on top of these five items that I'm gonna show you guys here, obviously there's other things like a carpet extractor, um, steamer, all that kind of stuff that will make your job even better. But with these five items, um, I can pretty much go into any car and make it look significantly better where I know the customer is not gonna have any, anything to say. They're gonna be super happy with the result. If I could only take five items to a car detail to do an interior, these would be what they are. Okay, so for some of these items, they're gonna seem super obvious. Obviously, like one of the items on the list is uh, microfiber towels. Obviously, you're cleaning, you need towels to do that. But there's specific reasons why I use certain ones and all that kind of stuff, so we'll jump into it. Number one on the list though, we're gonna talk about the very first thing that I use on every car detail. Um, and it's very simplified, guys, and it's actually super clean. Um, the reason that I love this stuff is because it works on tons of different surfaces. You can actually dilute this down to have it work from, from using it uh, more aggressively for your engine compartment or you can dilute it down and have it work on your upholstery, leather, like all sorts of different stuff, all the plastics, every, all the uh, components on the interior of the vehicle, this will work on. Um, just you gotta dilute it down uh, so that it's safe for that certain product. Now they do have, um, right on the back of this gallon jug here, they have a dilution ratio. Um, typically what I'll do is I'll start off pretty light, uh, especially say I'm working on a cloth interior of a car and it has significant stains. I'll start off pretty light I'll, I'll, and, and test it, go over it. If it's not pulling it out, I'll add a little bit more, go to it again, start pulling and agitate it, get it to lift out, use a microfiber towel, get, uh, rub it over the stain and get it to lift out of the material. Uh, moving on to number two. So after I go around and clean up all the plastics using my super clean, um, I want to apply some sort of a UV protection, right? now. The reason I'm gonna show you guys this product is because so, so, so many of my customers do not want any gloss, any, whether it be satin finish or whatever else, they don't want any sheen on their plastic, leather, whatever material they have inside the car. But I want to be able to give them some sort of UV protection. So the next item I'm gonna show you guys is off label. This is not what the product is actually advertised for, but it is technician's choice ceramic detail spray. I love this stuff so much um, because it's, it's, it's a fantastic product. When you use it on paint, the reason I love it so much is because it, it flashes out so, so nicely and doesn't leave any streaks behind. Well, it does the same thing for your interior. It has a nice, pleasant sense. It's not overbearing. It's not gonna be where they get in the car and they're like, oh gosh, this just smells like chemical. It doesn't do that, especially because when I'm doing this, I'll take a microfiber towel, I'll spray it onto the microfiber towel and I'll go through and I'll just lightly dust everything. Um, as you're doing this, right, again, the interior is already clean. As you're doing this, you're picking up any of the last kind of, this is what I call fine tuning, um, and you're picking up any of the last dust uh, that may be left behind on a panel. Um, and as you're doing that, you're leaving some of the SI2, some of the UV protection on all the panels on the interior of the vehicle. Uh, it also works on leather, it works great on leather. Um, it works phenomenally on Tesla interiors. This is what I, this is my go-to for Tesla interiors because for some reason Tesla material um, on their seats, um, if you use any sort of a dressing or conditioner or anything like that on the, on the seats, it, it's very streaky. It doesn't, uh, for, for me, um, a lot of times you can leave, it'll kind of be kind of patchy. Um, and this product doesn't do it. You're leaving down UV protection, you're saturating the, the material. So you're, with leather, a lot of people are concerned with obviously conditioning the leather so that it, it stays nice and supple and all that kind of good stuff. The reality is, is so many of the new vehicles use either some sort of a hybrid where it's leather and vinyl or the leather that they're using is coated anyways. So basically what it is, um, is you have the original material. I mean, think about it guys. You don't, if you get into like I say a BMW and it's got that nice red interior, like an ox blood interior, 
Well, when they process the leather, it's not red, right? So they're taking that, they're dyeing it, and then they're putting a coating on top of that. So it's not like you have to saturate that as much as you would a like full grain, like on a King Ranch, more of a raw hide type of leather. Same thing when you get into the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces and all that kind of stuff. That stuff you do want to properly condition all the time. You want to keep that stuff looking its best. In most cases in, you know, uh, gosh, man, I don't want to put a percentage on it, but there, uh, most vehicles, uh, it's a coated leather. And you, again, you do want to keep it hydrated but you don't need to do a full blown conditioning every time. So this is a maintenance product that you're able to keep on there, keep it looking its best, keep it UV protected, all that kind of good stuff. So again, technician's choice, ceramic detail spray. Uh, I use it to coat my interiors, adding UV protection without adding any sheen for that customer that just wants their car to look perfect like it did off, coming off the showroom floor just looking brand new. Okay, number three, obviously microfiber towels. Now these ones I have available on my site. I will also put a link down in the description for you guys to my site, but also to uh, an equivalent towel that's available on Amazon. Um, the rag company makes something exactly like this. So this is a microfiber towel. It's a edgeless towel. So there's no uh, surged edge on this thing. So there's nothing that can scratch. The reason that I like that for interiors is because nowadays so many vehicles have that piano black material inside, um, which looks great when it's clean, but it scratches extremely easily. Um, so having something with an edgeless uh, edge like this, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, something with no edge to it just allows you to clean and protect and do all that kind of stuff with reducing the risk of scratching because that piano black interior it's crazy, it scratches so easily. So um, now again, on my site I have the exact same towel, I have it in red and in blue. I choose red for my interiors. I like to just color code my stuff, right? I have a certain color for interiors, certain color for exteriors, certain color for windows. Um, I typically just operate with three colors, um, but red is my interior color. But whatever color works for you, just remember to try and separate them so that you're not cross-contaminating and putting uh, a chemical that's on from the interior onto your windows. Obviously that'll streak, vice versa with the interior, exterior, windows, all that kind of stuff. So um, color code your, your towels just to make your life easier. Okay, so number four now is kind of a loaded one. Um, it's brushes. You need brushes to get the job done. So I actually have quite a few of them here. Um, first off, I will start with just a longer handled uh, upholstery brush, this works great. You can agitate leather, uh, upholstery, carpets, all that kind of stuff with it. Um, then we also have this one. This one is available on my site. It's just a larger surface, so it's nice contoured grip, which is nice. To be perfectly honest with you guys, if I was only gonna choose one between these two, um, I'd go with this one just because the smaller surface allows you to fit into smaller areas. So personally, I would go with that one. I don't have these on my site, but I'll link it down in the description below for you guys. Next up is, again, this one's from Adams, but Max Shine makes them, uh, de uh, gosh, Detail Factory? I can't remember, but there's a bunch of co companies that make them. It's a synthetic brush that is super, super soft. The reason I like this is because it's so soft, it fits into tight areas. It's safe on that piano black material. Um, and it also foams well when you're agitating and, and hitting all your door panels. It foams up really nicely. So fantastic brush there. Highly recommend that. And then we move on to some detailing swabs. Now this I can get by without, but I really enjoy having these as an option. These are from MacShine and they give you a whole, this is only a few of them, but they give you a whole different assortment of different sizes, thicknesses, materials. Um, so these are great for getting into all the really, really tight spots. Uh, another option, which is a newer thing, this is from MacShine, and these are technically like a makeup style brush, but they sourced them and they are fantastic. So again, they're that super, super soft synthetic material, incredibly soft, but they are so dense that they don't compress as much. So you can see I'm pushing down on it and it's not just completely falling in on itself versus this guy you push down and it just completely gives, right? So what this, what I like to use these for is especially around the center console, your shift boot, all that kind of stuff. There's little, little cracks that uh, little food crumbs and things typically get caught in. And with these guys, I can take them. They're safe for the area. 
and I can take them and they're strong enough to actually pull that stuff out. So fantastic option. They also make one that it doesn't have a long handle like that. I actually really, really like using this one on door panels. So I'll load this up, spray some stuff on the door panel and go through and agitate. And this thing is fantastic. Again, super, super soft, um, but again, denser and doesn't just fold on, over on itself so you can get a little more work done with it. Highly recommend these. Now the last brush I'm gonna talk about, and this one I can't live without. I absolutely love this thing, and this is a drill brush. So you get in that brush attachment, which is very similar to this guy here, um, in a attachment piece that goes on a drill. So th with this I can agitate, uh, say my carpets, right? I can spray my, my cleaner on, go in with this, and it's comparable to hand polishing a car versus polishing it with a, with a dual action polisher. So much faster, such a better result. If you don't have one of these and you're not using these, get one, they're fantastic. Um, they just, it's just one of those backing pieces here. Let me try and get that to focus. Um, and it goes right into a drill and uh, just does a phenomenal job. They come in different variations as well, so you can get stiffer ones, medium stiffness, uh, soft, all that kind of stuff, just like a toothbrush, um, and for whatever surface you're working on. Now, if you're doing working on leather that um, may be a little more brittle than obviously your carpets, uh, go with a softer one, agitate everything out, it works phenomenally well. So that is four. For number five, we gotta head over to the other uh, side of the shop. So let's head over there real quick, and this is one of the things that makes my job super, super, efficient, makes my life much easier, and really, really drives home the result that I want for the customer or for my personal car. And the final item, guys, here I'm sitting on the ground is an air compressor. Now, this is the one I have in my shop, and it's okay. Um, it's nice and quiet, that's why I got this one. I didn't want to in, uh, disrupt my neighbors. The walls in my shop are pretty thin, so I didn't want something that was super loud that, was, that would bother them. Uh, in my trucks, I have more aggressive uh, air compressors that they are louder, but they're enclosed in my truck while I'm working, so it's not a big deal. So this one is a four and a half gallon, three CFM at 90 PSI. I like to operate higher than that. I think the ones in my truck are 5.1 CFM at 90, um, which just gives me more power and uh, a faster reload time than this one does. This definitely gets the job done, don't get me wrong, it's just, it's a little bit slower. Okay, so what am I using that compressor for? One of the things is while I'm working on my dash, vents are a big thing, right? Everyone always wonders, hey, do you get the vents when you're, when you're doing a detail? Yeah, I do. I'll, I'll typically load up my cleaner on this little brush, get in there, agitate it, get it all loose, take my compressed air, blow it out, it comes out absolutely perfect. Uh, another thing is, uh, for under the seats and along the, the track, the seat tracks, between the seat and the, and the center console, all those tight spots, having the compressed air, you're able to get in there and blow everything out so that you're accessing everything and then you can vacuum it up. I just realized I did five items for an interior detail and I didn't include a vacuum. Uh, obviously you need a vacuum, so I guess this is six things. but. Uh, I guess a vacuum is very self-explanatory. Maybe we'll replace the vacuum with the microfibers because that's self-explanatory too. Anyway, so back to the uh, air compressor. Like I said, guys, you're able to um, blow everything out. You're able to fine tune everything with that. Uh, in places where I will use these brushes, you can also agitate it. If it's still not coming out, you can hit a couple blasts of uh, compressed air it knocks it right out of there and then you can vacuum it up and make it perfect. So very, very, very important for me to have it, uh, compressed air. Um, more important, honestly, more important than a steamer or an extractor for me. Those, that thing is my number one go-to. Um, as far as an extractor, a lot of times now with products like this, we can actually get everything lifted out and then absorbed into a microfiber towel from the carpets or upholstery. Um, and then you can spray it down with water and vacuum it out as your extraction. It's not ideal, you do wanna have an extractor, but if you could only have one thing between extractor, steamer, and air, compressed air, personally, I'd go with compressed air. That may trigger a lot of you that may be, uh, let me know down in the description, guys, what you think about that comment. It's just for me, I find myself going to compressed air more than anything else, so. That's it, guys, I hope that helps you. I really, I, again, on this channel, I really aim to simplify the detailing process and make it kinda simple and clear to understand. You don't need 
all the products in the world. You can simplify things and get a fantastic result. So again, I hope that helps. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you're subscribed, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. We'll see you on the next one.